Welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Fanker. This is part 21 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about enhancing Grid View editing interface using template fields. This is continuation to part 20 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial, so please watch part 20 before proceeding. Now, by default, when editing data, a text box control is rendered as the default editing interface element for all bound columns. So if you recollect from part 20 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial, look at this, this employee ID name, gender and city columns, all of them are actually bound fields. So if we flip this web form, you know, into the source mode, look at this employee ID name, gender and city, all of them are actually bound fields. So obviously when I put any of this row in edit mode, look at this for name, gender and city, I'm getting text box controls as the editing interface elements. Okay. Now for gender instead of text box, I would actually like to have a drop down list because if I allow text box for the gender, users may type in different values, you know, male, female, or, you know, simply small case letters, male, or some users may even choose M or capital letter M. Now I don't want to be allowing users to basically enter all these different variations for gender. Instead, I want to force users to select one of the existing options within the drop-down list, male and female. So obviously, we have to replace this text box control with a drop-down list control when this row renders in edit mode. And obviously, to achieve that, we have to convert this bound field into a template field. So gender at the moment is a bound field. So bound fields by default, you know, use text box controls as their editing interface. Instead, we want drop-down list. So obviously, we have to convert this bound field into a template field. And to do that, there are two ways. We can either, you know, change the HTML directly here, or we can use the designer to auto-generate HTML for us. Let's see how to use the designer. Let's flip this web form to the design mode. Click on this grid view uh, tasks button. And then look at this, you have this link here, edit columns, click on that link. And then from the selected fields, look at this, in selected fields, you actually see, you know, total five fields there. The first field is the command field, which is displaying that uh, command button, edit command button. And then the rest fields are the bound fields that display employee ID name, gender, and city. Now we want to convert gender into a template field, so I'm going to select that, and then click on this link, convert this field into a template field. So this is going to convert that bound field into a template template field. Now let's click OK. Now let's actually flip this web form to the source mode and see what happened to the gender column. So when I flip this web form to the source mode, look at this, you know, this bound field, gender bound field is actually now converted into a template field. And this template field has two things within it, edit item template and item template. Okay, so what are these templates? Now item template is actually used when the row is in non-editing mode. So this row is not in edit mode. So that's when the grid view control uses item template. Okay, so in the item template, we are saying use label control. But whereas when the row is in edit mode, we are saying use a text box control. So actually after we have converted, you know, gender field, you know, from bound gender, from bound field into a template field, if you look at the HTML here, you know, for items template, we are using label control, but for edit item template, we are still using text box control. So obviously, when I put any of this row in edit mode, it's still going to use the text box control. Instead, we actually want to use a drop down list control when this row is in edit mode. Okay, so obviously, we want to replace this control with a drop down list control. Okay, again, we can change that directly in the HTML here, or we can use the designer. Let's see how to use the designer and do it. So let's flip this web form to the design mode. Now remember, we now have a template field within the grid view control, which is gender column. So since we have a template field here, look at this, when I click on this edit templates link, it will actually show us that gender column, which is a template field. And I get the opportunity to you know, modify the templates, different templates. Uh, that that can be present in a template field. So I can have an item template, edit item template. In addition to them, we can also have alternating item template. So what is alternating item template? Every alternate row within the grid view control. And then we can also have templates for header and footer. But for the purpose of this demo, we are just going to have an item template and edit item template. Look at this item template, I have a label control. Whereas in edit item template, I have a text box control. But what did we decide? We want to use a drop down list instead of a text box control. So I'm going to get rid of that one, delete that. And then let's drag and drop a drop down list control onto this, uh, you know, edit item template. 
that's it now let's go back to the grid view tasks and and edit uh, I mean template editing so at this time if I flip the web form to the source mode look at what is there in edit item template I just have drop down list but notice this drop down list doesn't have any list items so basically a drop down list is a collection of list item objects but I don't have any list item objects here okay so obviously now at this time when we run this okay look at this item template is label control so the genders of every employee is displayed using label control but when I put the row in edit mode remember we are using a drop down list and we don't have any list item uh, objects here nor we are populating that dynamically so that's why an empty drop down list is displayed here so instead of that we want to have you know some options here male female and along with them maybe I want to have another option select the gender basically to prompt the user to select the gender okay so let's see how to add those list items again those list items can be added you know directly in the HTML so if I want to add a list item I can do that here so list item I can specify text you know maybe text I want it as select gender and then I on the value as well so value is also going to be select gender and then let's close that so I can either do this or I can use the designer to generate these list items for me automatically so let's see how to use the designer let's flip the web form to the design mode so let's go back to edit templates and then I want to edit edit item template so here is the drop down list go to the properties of the drop down list and then you have items property click on this ellipsis button that should bring up the list item collection editor by default I already have select gender there in addition to that I want male the value is also going to be male and then I want female the value is also going to be female click OK so now let's actually end template editing now let's flip the web form to the source mode look at that in addition to select gender I have male and female now here we are explicitly using the text and value properties since text and value are same I can either use you know this variation of the HTML or simply use select gender just like how we are using it for you know male and female so I can do that as well alright now let's go ahead and run this and look at this when the row is rendered when the rows are rendered in non editing mode all of them are you know the genders are displayed using label controls but when I put the row in edit mode look at that now I have the drop down list as expected now notice that there's a slight issue here for example if you look at the gender of Mary she is female but when I put the row in edit mode look at what is selected in the drop down list it's saying select gender okay but I would like to have female selected like this when the row is in edit mode because that's what is her gender and then if I want to change it to male I will simply change it to male and then update it okay so look at that for example Mike is male but when I click that you know instead of male it is actually defaulting to the first list item in the drop down list so this is an issue so how do we correct that to correct that first let's actually inspect how is the label control displaying the actual gender look at this label control it's using the bind you know method whatever is the bind method returning we are using that value as you know as the value for the text property okay so this bind method is retrieving the column value gender and then binding it to the text property similarly if you want to have the gender selected in the drop down list by default then use selected value property of the drop down list so selected value is equal to now let's actually copy this and use it as the value for selected value property so with that change let's go ahead and run this now okay so look at this mark is male so I edit that male is selected in the drop down list and similarly Mary's gender is female so may female is selected now let's actually change Mary's gender from female to male and see if it works as expected so employee ID with row and you know is equal to three successfully updated Mary's gender is male let's actually check that within the database so Mary's gender is male as expected so we have seen how to enhance the editing interface element uh, using template fields it's actually very simple so if you notice you know 
all the steps that we have done using the designer all it has done basically is convert that bound field into a template field you know in the item template I'm using a label control whereas in edit item template we are using a drop down list control now look at this this drop down list has these list items statically defined on the page at design time okay in reality you may have you know drop down list like cities drop down list or departments drop down list etc now if you want to dynamically load them we simply use maybe another data access layer method which retrieves the data and bind it to the drop down list probably we'll talk about that in a later video session all right on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.